50 million years ago, during the dawn of modern mammals, a pig-like animal appeared. It probably spent most of its life in the water. But its descendants would become the largest mammals ever to live on dry land. The elephants. At one time, 11 species of elephant roamed the world, but almost all have since become extinct. The last to suffer this fate was the awesome woolly mammoth about 10,000 years ago. Today, only three species of elephants remain in Africa and Asia. They haven't completely lost their prehistoric ties. Two of the elephant's closest living relatives, manatees and dugongs, still spend their lives in the water. Elephants in Africa live south of the Sahara Desert. Some live in grasslands called savanna. Summers here are very hot. So these elephants have large ears to fan their bodies. and their wrinkly skin helps too. After a shower or bath, moisture gets trapped in all the nooks and crannies of their skin and helps keep them cool. Other elephants live in the tropical forests of Central and Western Africa. These elephants have a smaller body and tusks than the savanna elephants. Their elephant cousins in Asia are also smaller in size. Their bodies are suited to the moist Asian rainforest, where cooling off is easier. His floppy ears aren't nearly as big as an African elephant's, and his gray skin is less wrinkled. This African bull elephant may weigh as much as 80 people, or six cars, his heart alone can weigh as much as a young child. He's also got really big feet, up to one and a half meters, about five feet around. And his brain is larger than all other land animals, a bit larger even than ours. But big is just the beginning. That trunk has literally thousands of muscles but there are no bones, so it can move in any direction. It is so sensitive, it can pick up a single blade of grass. And yet so strong, it can carry a tree trunk. They don't actually drink with their trunk. They use it like a hose to pour water into their mouths. A big elephant like this one could suck up about three gallons. That's 10 liters at a time. That trunk is really just an extension of his upper lip and nose, which has evolved over many thousands of years. It's the perfect tool for reaching high or low to eat. For scratching an itch. And for clearing a path through the brush. Elephants are great communicators. They talk to each other with a large repertoire of growls, grunts, snorts, and roars. A loud trumpeting gives warning and gathers the herd. Most elephant communication is so low we can't even hear it but his low-frequency rumbles can be heard by other elephants far away. They may also communicate by sensing vibrations through the soft skin on the pads of their feet. This guy will spend most of the day eating, putting away nearly 400 pounds, 
180 kilos of food each day. That means elephants pass a lot of smelly methane gas, and they produce a huge amount of poop, called dung. It's not so nice to look at, but this elephant poop is very important. It is full of seeds from the plants and leaves that the elephant has eaten. When a dung beetle rolls it around, or carries it below ground, it helps replant new grasses and trees. In fact, some seeds won't even germinate if they don't pass through the elephant's digestive tract. In some areas, Without elephants, a third of all big tree species would completely die out. Elephants contribute to the survival of plants and other animals in many other ways. Her journey through the high grass provides food for birds by disturbing small reptiles, amphibians, and insects. The depressions left by her footprints can trap rainfall, giving smaller animals a place to drink. Elephants are so important to the biodiversity where they live that they are considered a keystone species. Like the center stone, or keystone, that holds up an arch, elephants play a critical role in supporting their ecosystem. These huge animals are also very important to people. In Asia, elephants have had a special role in society and culture for thousands of years. They provide transportation and help with heavy lifting. Elephants even went to war. They were like tanks in ancient battles. There is an elephant god called Ganesha in the Hindu religion. He is the lord of success, the god of education, knowledge, wealth, and wisdom. Elephants are in fact very intelligent and self-aware, right up there with dolphins, apes, and humans. They are one of only a few animals, including ourselves, who can recognize their own reflection in a mirror. You have probably heard about the elephant's amazing memory, but did you know that they are also one of the most emotional and social of all animals? They play with each other like kids roughhousing and fooling around, tussling with their trunks. They share special greetings with family and close friends. They are loyal and care about each other. Working together, these adult elephants rush over to help a young calf. Elephants live in family groups with lifelong ties. Herds usually include just adult females and their calves. When male elephants grow up, they leave the herd to live a mostly solitary life. The oldest and largest female elephant is called the matriarch. This wise old grandma is in charge of the herd. Everywhere she goes, the others will follow. She decides when and where the herd will eat, drink, and rest. With many years of memory and experience, she knows where to find food and water during drought, and other things that are vital to the well-being of the herd. Like children, young elephants are completely dependent on their family. Together, the herd provides love and discipline. They teach the calves how to find food and water, even how to behave. That strong bond starts from the very beginning. A mother elephant 
is pregnant for almost two whole years before she gives birth. This baby may look small next to its mother, but already it weighs more than 250 pounds, 110 kilos. A baby elephant needs to touch or be touched by its mother or another close relative every few seconds for reassurance. She will be nursed by her mother for up to four years. At first, calves don't really know what to do with their trunk. They swing it to and fro, round and around, with little control. Sometimes they may even step on it. Baby elephants have milk tusks, which fall out after about a year. As they get older, their permanent tusks grow in. Those famous tusks are really just teeth. They are the only two front teeth an elephant has. These tusks can grow to an incredible three meters, more than 10 feet long. They are both a blessing and a curse. Tusks are one of the elephant's most useful tools for foraging and digging, ripping bark off trees, as weapons, and for resting a heavy trunk. Just like right or left-handed humans, elephants prefer using one tusk more than the other. But these awesome tusks are a curse, too, because they put elephants at risk from hunters. The large tusks of adult elephants provide ivory, which has been used by people for thousands of years. In fact, the word elephant comes from the Greek word for ivory. The hunters prefer ivory from mature males with the largest tusks. It's used for piano keys, billiard balls, fancy chopsticks, and other luxury trinkets. Tourists sometimes buy ivory souvenirs while on holiday in Africa or Asia, but every piece of ivory comes from a dead elephant. Elephant populations worldwide have dropped by at least 50% in the past century, and the ivory trade is mostly to blame. To help protect elephants, all international trade in ivory was banned following an agreement among governments in 1989. But sadly, the ban has been partially lifted since then. So illegal hunters, called poachers, continue to kill elephants, just for the sake of ivory trinkets. Elephants are also at risk because logging, farming, and other human activities are squeezing them into smaller and smaller areas. They are migratory animals that can travel more than 100 kilometers, or 60 miles, each year, following the same feeding and watering trails. When these roaming routes are divided by roads and railways, or blocked by houses, elephant herds have trouble finding food and water. Hungry elephants may wander into farms and villages in search of food. People get angry when elephants eat the crops they need to feed their families. They do whatever it takes to make the elephants leave. They may injure or kill them, and people can get hurt too. Sometimes the best way to help prevent conflict is to keep people and elephants farther apart. In Malawi, Africa, IFA rescue teams moved a herd of endangered elephants out of harm's way. Many had been injured by local villagers protecting their families and crops. The elephants were sedated so they could sleep comfortably through the long journey. 150 miles, more than 300 kilometers, by truck and even by air. They woke up together in their new home, safe, healthy, 
and hungry in a free-roaming reserve. These thirsty pachyderms are some of the last few hundred wild elephants in China. They live in the tropical rainforests of Yunnan province, where sharing space with local communities has become an increasing challenge. With so few elephants left in China, it's very important to find ways for them to live in peace with their human neighbors. IFO is helping the local people here develop new ways of making a living that don't destroy the elephant's forest home and to avert conflict and injury by alerting people and traffic when a herd is near a village or crossing a road. In India, a unique wildlife rescue center is helping create a better future for elephants, one calf at a time. The center rescues and cares for Asian elephant calves that have been injured, orphaned, or somehow separated from their herds before they are old enough to survive on their own. The young calves are given the same round-the-clock care that they would get from their mother. A bottle of milk, then tucked in for the night. As the young elephants get stronger and begin to grow, they are taught how to live in the wild. Walks in the jungle introduce them to wild habitat and help them learn the skills they will need to survive on their own and with a herd. Baby rhinos and other wild animals are also rescued and hand-reared at the center, then later released back to a wild home. Once they are ready, Usually, when they are about a year or two old, the elephant calves are moved to Manus National Park in the foothills of the Himalayan mountains. IFA is helping India protect this vast reserve from development and to secure it from poaching. A radio collar helps IFA keep track of the orphans as they grow up in the forest. More than a dozen endangered Asian elephants have been released in Manus over the past few years and given a second chance at life in the wild. Conservation groups like IFA are also helping to protect large roaming habitat for elephants in Africa. Like Tsavo National Park, home to the largest population of elephants in Kenya and to a huge variety of African wildlife. Such efforts give hope for the future of elephants and for the biodiversity of our planet. They say elephants never forget. It's up to all of us to ensure that we don't either. Together, we can make sure that this mighty elephant family doesn't end up just a memory. <laughs>